when you meditate, there are two things you have to watch out for. Pain and distraction on one side, and pleasure and stillness on the other. Now you're going to meet with these things inevitably. What you have to watch out for, though, is how you approach them, how you deal with them. If the pain and distraction get you irritated, okay, you've, you've lost the battle. You have to be very patient and very insistent. Each time the mind wanders away from the breath, you can bring it right back. There are pains in different parts of the body. There may not be pains as you start out, but you know they're going to develop in the course of the hour. So you get ready for them. As soon as the breath gets comfortable, think of it spreading down the back, down the, down the legs, wherever the pains may be. Open up all the channels leading to that spot and leading away from that spot. And keep your attention with the comfortable parts of the breath, the areas where the breath feels good. The thing is, when you're with the comfortable parts, you have to be very careful not to just wallow around in the pleasure. This is especially tempting after a tiring day. It's like a big feather bed. You just want to jump right in and get swallowed up into the feather bed. Notice, especially in places in Thailand where they have long evening sits to go on for a couple hours, the primary thought in people's minds is, how can I get through these hours as pleasantly as possible? And the mind finds a little place. It's called delusion concentration, where there's a sense of ease, and the mind is not doing anything at all. It's just very, very still. But you don't really know where you are. You come out and there's that little question, was I awake or was I asleep or what, what was that? What happened was there was a sense of pleasure and you dropped the breath and you just went for the pleasure. You didn't, do, didn't want to do any work at all. So the middle course here is to stick with the breath. Remember that the pleasure is created by the flow of the breath and by the stillness of the mind working together the focus of the mind on the breath, alert and mindful. You don't want to drop your alertness, you don't want to drop your mindfulness. I mean, that's what happens in delusion concentration. You're not very alert and you really forget what you're doing. So you always want to have that thought in the back of your mind, we're staying with the breath. And you're alert to both what the breath is doing and what the mind is doing. And as for the pleasure, it'll take care of the body on its own. Whatever rest and healing comes from this sense of ease and pleasure, it's not going to be increased by wallowing in it. Just let it spread, let it move through the body. It'll take care of things on its own. Your job is to stay as mindful and alert as possible. It sounds like work, but it is. A kind of work, but it's a work in pleasure. It's a work in stillness. An effort that you put in pleasure, an effort that you put into the stillness. It's good work. So you keep reminding yourself to stay with the breath, and you evaluate how things are going. You drop the evaluation only when everything is really, really fine and you can stay centered and still and not lose your focus and not lose your alertness. That's when you can simply become one with the breath. And the breath and the pleasure and your awareness all seem to become one, one entity. And as long as you can maintain your alertness and mindfulness while you do that, you're fine. The problem is people like to go right there without taking their mindfulness and alertness along. Just kind of drift off. And the image I think of is a mosquito that's hit a, a nice little blood vessel in your skin. 
And if you ever notice, if you ever watched a mosquito allow it to bite and see what happens, it sticks its little nose in there and it finds a little bit of blood and it just sucks and sucks and sucks and finally it gets so big that it looks like it's going to burst. It doesn't burst. And it's so blissed out, it just, its feet seem to lose touch with your skin. It's just kind of hanging there by the nose. And sometimes you try to brush it away at that point, it won't go. It's just so blissed out with all that blood. That's what happens in delusion concentration, is you hit that nice little source of ease, and you just stick yourself in it, and then you let go of everything else. including the mindfulness, including the alertness. It feels good, but you don't really gain anything from it. It is restful to some extent, but not nearly as energizing as if you're focused on the breath and the ease and you stay mindful and alert. Because we're not here just to bliss out, we're here to learn how to use the sense of pleasure. This is part of our path. And whatever pains come up, we learn how to use those too. This, so, this is what's so radically different about the Buddha's teaching. And people who were into self-torture had pain as their goal. They wanted to have as much pain as possible. The more pain, the better. Burn away their defilements or cleanse away their defilements. Then, of course, by far the vast majority of people want to go the other direction. They just wanted to wallow in as much pleasure as possible, like those little rats where they put an implant into the brain, where they find where the pleasure center is, and then they, they can put that little strip of metal on the outside of the skull. And if the rat can stick the little metal piece against a little bar, it gets a slight electric shock and it stimulates its pleasure center. They'll just do that. They'll stop eating, they'll stop doing everything, they end up dying because they're just so addicted to the pleasure. That's where most people are. If we could have our pleasure centers stimulated, that would be it. That's what most people would want. But as with the rats, we die because of our pleasure. At the very least, our goodness dies. The possibility of finding a well-being, a sense of true happiness that's deeper than that dies away. What the Buddha wants us to do is to learn how to use whatever pains there are in the body as a way of developing mindfulness and alertness, and to use the pleasure that comes from a still mind as our food along the path, and as our means for prying ourselves away from sensual pleasures, sensual desires. Putting the mind in a position where it can look deeper inside to see where it's holding on, where it's creating even the slightest bit of stress, dis-ease for itself. So don't look at the pain as an enemy, and don't look at the pleasure as your true friend. You have to remember you're going to use these things, they're tools. They're means to an end. And you need to be careful how you use those tools. And even though it's work, this is good work. That you think about the breath and evaluate it. And John Lee compares it to sifting flour. As you sift the flour, it gets finer and finer and finer, higher and higher quality. That sense of ease and energy in the body gets more and more refined, more and more refined, more still. But if you're on top of everything, okay, the mind doesn't drift off. It stays alert, even when the sense of the shape of the body begins to disappear. You're right here. You're alert, and you know you're alert. And the body seems like a mist. And you can focus in on the space between those little droplets of mist. And as long as you know what you're doing, you're, you're fine. But all of this is a means to an end. And 
And you can never let go of what keeps the concentration right, which is your mindfulness and your alertness. And the discernment that you bring as you evaluate things. Those are the things you have to hold on to all the way down through the path. to keep you from wandering off to either side. So be very careful about what you let go of and what you hold on to. Because it makes the difference between staying on the path and wandering off into the weeds and the jungle and wasting a lot of time. 